I hope you can see all see my, my screen. Um, the, sub the subject of the presentation is the designing country schools solutions for land rights and tenure security issues. Um, uh, but first I will introduce myself in short. My name is Ernst Peter Oosterbroek um, from the Netherlands. I'm a geodetic engineer. Uh, since 1984, I worked for the Dutch Land Registry. I suppose that's way before most of you were born. Um, it was a good time, uh, all the time. Uh, since uh, 2018, I have worked for Cadastre International, which is a department of the Dutch Land Registry, Dutch Agency for Land Registry. And uh, in those years, I have uh, contributed to several projects on you know, land administration and also proposals for projects in Colombia, Mozambique, Serbia, Azerbaijan, and uh, Palestine. Um, currently, I am based in uh, Benin, Africa. That's where I am now. It's 10 o'clock in the morning uh, here uh, in Benin, and the temperature is about 30 degrees. Um, and my work here is to coordinate contributions by, by Cadaster, uh, by, the, by the Cadaster team of experts uh, to a national land administration project. So far, my inter the introduction of myself and on the, on the picture you see uh, four people. It may be clear that I am the right one of those four and the other three are local colleagues of mine. And here we are doing some field work. Um, well, Cluster International, as I said, a uh, department of the Dutch Agency for uh, Land Administration. It has about a 30 year, at least 30 year uh, uh, history in developing and implementing uh, land administration uh, uh, all, all around the world. We started in Latin America and in the, uh, the former communist countries in Eastern Europe, but uh, later on we, we uh, had our activities uh, all around the world. Um, and for, for examples of um, national level implementations, which oh, there is a spelling mistake in the, I see, uh, le national level implementations uh, from recent years or currently going on. I picked out uh, four of them. Uh, that is uh, uh, Nepal. It is a project uh, done uh, in cooperation with uh, GLTN. Uh, actually, uh, I Personally, I was not at all involved in it, but it had really had to do with the uh, national implementation strategy. Uh, then there is a, a large project going on in, in, in Colombia. Um, and Colombia is, is, is um, way behind in land administration, and there was also a, a 50 years conflict with the FARC and other uh, groups. Which made, uh, which caused very many internal displacements of people, which had in tremendous impact on the on the land rights situation. Um, over there, we are making good progress in the uh, national implementation to 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 catch up all the uh, re, re, retardants that is uh, caused last uh, fifty years. Um, we also have a large project in Mozambique. Mozambique is a very special country in a way that formal uh, land ownership does not exist, um, but you, we do have land rights and uh, use rights. And in, in, in the way of solutions, there's not really a difference between ownership and, and use rights uh, as, when you look at the way to, to collect data and to, to secure those land rights. And uh, the, then at last to mention the Benin project, that's where, where I am involved in, what I'm involved in at the moment. Um, and I will also take this project as, an, uh, as, as the example for this presentation, um, because uh, two reasons, uh, because I'm personally involved and, and that's a project I, I, I'm most aware of. Um, but the other reason is that it is the uh, the project that is closest to the actual country level implementation. On the background, you may hear a plane. I, I, I live very near to the airport, so the plane is landing, but okay, it's over now. Um, okay, the, the, the Benin project. Um, Benin is the country in West Africa, the former French colony. It's, it's a French speaking uh, country. And um, 
what we are planning to do in a four years project started in 2018 to establish a sustainable national land administration framework. Uh, our main beneficiary is the National Agency for Land Administration, ANDF. You can see it uh, left below on the sheet, ANDF. Uh, and the project is financed by the Netherlands government. Um, what the, 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 the ultimate goal is to get a full coverage of the Benin territory uh, with the uh, land rights. Um, although I must say that in the project we will not reach uh, this full coverage, we will only uh, manage to do a part of the country. But if we have set up all the, all the, the infrastructure, then uh, other projects can continue. Uh, so what are we doing in this project? Um, we are uh, developing procedures for the initial data collections and very important for national uh, implementations is that we are also developing procedures for updating pr uh, processes in case of uh, uh, inheritance, uh, sale of parcels and what, whatever other reasons, reasons there may be to, to, uh, that need that cause a need for updating. Um, we have almost finished the establishment of the developing, development of those procedures. For the data collection, it is all finished, but for the updating, we are still in a discussion with the National Land Administration Agency here. But I think we can uh, um, get to, an, uh, uh, to, to get to an, uh, an, a solution very soon. Um, then the second uh, activity is the local and organizational arrangements with all parties in the land administration chain. This is very important because the national uh, agency uh, was, was founded in 2016, so that's only five years ago. And before that, uh, the, the, in particular, the municipalities had a, had a large role in uh, in the land administration, but it was a very uh, fragmented way of administering. Um, but if we uh, uh, change to a national approach, then of course the other stakeholders like, like municipalities, but also local chiefs and um, for example, uh, land surveyors, uh, notaries, they all get some other role in the process. And um, well, of course, we must come to an agreement with all those uh, parties. For this part of the project, we have still a lot, a lot to do. It's, it, we just started with it. Then the, uh, there are two very big activities in the, in the way that, that it, it costs a lot of effort in, in hours and uh, days for the project uh, team and for the, uh, all the people involved. The first one is the developing of an IT system to store and manage the land administration data. Um, after, uh, after a study, we, we have decided that we uh, will develop a system for the country um, by this project. Um, and we started with that in, uh, in uh, December 2020. So that's only one month ago, well, almost two months ago, we started uh, with this development with local developers, they mean IT developers. Then um, about this, at the same moment, we started the uh, data collection in the field um, with the aim to, to collect about 200,000 parcels uh, in uh, several municipalities of the country and uh, during this uh, data collection we will have a special focus on vulnerable groups um, because in, in, in the culture of Benin it's, it's not um, automatically that for example land rights for women or land rights for youth or, or uh, other vulnerable group minorities will be, will be uh, registered uh, um, well and, 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 and so there is in the project a special focus on these groups. Um, well, a bit of the context of the project. As I mentioned, the National Agency for Land Administration started, I, I, it's here four years ago, but it's, it's five years ago, I must say, 2060. 
and um, since then only 60,000 parcels were registered in the in the National Land Administration, where there is an estimation that there will be about five million parcels. Um, so if you if you do a bit of calculation, then you can uh, uh, find out that at this speed it will take over 300 years to to cover all of Benin, which is not in compliance with the national policy of the government that wants to uh, get, uh, establish a full coverage of Benin in about 10 years. There is a big difference. Um, so there is, we, we need to do something. Um, there is a second a very important uh, factor that is even if the population would get a land title for free, then the updating uh, procedure in, in case of, of inheritance or, or sale would be too expensive for, for, for a lot of people, especially in the rural areas. They would not be able to pay for, the, for all the costs that are, uh, um, um, that, that are concerning the, the, the transfer of a, a formal land title. It will, that will be cost of a notary, a land surveyor, and, so, uh, and administration uh, costs. So um, those two aspects led us to the, uh, to the conclusion that a fit for purpose approach uh, was required and the fit for purpose uh, refers of course to the, uh, the fit for purpose uh, publication by FIG 2014, I, I remember FIG and World Bank, um, which is, uh, well, that is the approach that we will follow for the Benin case. And if we elaborate that into what what we will establish. Then you can uh, summarize it like this. Uh, next to the land titles, uh, there will be uh, introduced a registration of presumed ownership. And that is in the red uh, text, it is a downgrading of the legal and geographic requirements for land administration. This, this we call this a dual system. So the, the, the possibility of registering a land title or, or registering property by a formal land title, which is a heavy procedure, that will remain, of course, and it's important, for example, in the, in the big cities here, where you have huge buildings, uh, then there is really a need uh, for a, a formal registration, but especially for, for the poorer areas in the cities and also, and, and, and mainly in the rural areas, um, we will introduce a registration, a possibility of registration of presumed ownership. Um, and we will, we will uh, create a good procedure for that with uh, collecting of data, with uh, uh, participation of the, of the people, of the population, uh, with the publication of the uh, collected data and possibilities to uh, make uh, uh, objections to that. So that's that's what we, we, we do. Downgrading legal and geographic requirements. Also, geographic requirements will be downgraded. Um, then, uh, in our uh, approach, we will apply standards. Uh, I, I mentioned here, for example, LADM, uh, that administration domain model. But also other standards, and we and also in the in the tools we use, we use. Uh, uh, as much as possible open source standard tools. And for the uh, IT development, we have chosen uh, a Scrum Agile uh, system development approach, and uh, we will do that with Beninese IT developers. We, uh, uh, those are both IT uh, employees uh, of the uh, National Land Administration Agency, but also uh, a recruited team of an uh, IT uh, company here. Um, the main purpose of that is to um, create local capacity building instead of flying in experts and they, as soon as the project is finished, they fly out and the knowledge is also uh, left, has also left. Well, and now the challenges of national implementation. So I, I step back from the Benin project more to the general level. Um, national implementation is 
really different from doing a pilot in some in some small area. Um, and I have um, distinguished four categories of uh, challenges. I start uh, at the left upper. Um, it's it's not, it. Yeah. It, my timekeeper is telling me you have one minute for presentation, and then we have ten minutes for questions. Okay, I will. I will. I will go very, very quickly. I, I, I thought it was already fast, but okay. I will. I will yeah. go very quickly. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Okay. It's. Um, I start left. Uh, it's a huge amount of work. For example, if you have to do five million parcels, that's that's a lot of work. You need many teams, and you need a lot of equipment. But there's also a very important. It's also very important to have the. the the good uh, method, because for example, if one parcel costs $10 or $20, it's a huge difference if you multiply that by 5 million uh, parcels. Um, then you have the organizational issues. It is fundamentally different from a pilot in which pilot inventors are personally involved because if something goes differently than expected or if something goes wrong, the, the, the pilot inventor, he may, uh, inter he may uh, intervene and it it's, can be solved. But once you have 200 teams or 1,000 teams in the country doing the work, then you need a, another type of management. Um, and also the land administration agency needs to scale up, uh, which we in this process we are right now in Benin, for example. Then the technical issues, it's a, a bit uh, comparable to the organizational issues. If you uh, collect 5 million parcels, data of 5 million parcels, your, your IT uh, environment must be really uh, robust and it must be scalable. You must have good arrangements for backups, for security, etc. And also, if network is hardware fails, then you need to replace it and not have uh, the teams waiting. And then the most tough part of it is in the bottom left, bottom right, the legal and the institutional issues. If you have changing roles in the process, then uh, the, 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 the parties involved may object. For example, surveyors, notaries, municipalities, also local chiefs, they may see, may see changes in the roles and they may see that as a threat. And the, the, the challenge is to turn that into an opportunity. And there may also be conflicts with the law if you, if you uh, um, if you um, introduce a fit-for-purpose approach. For example, geometric precision or uh, the role of grassroots surveyors. Okay, I will leave it to this. Um, there is uh, hope I will, uh, I'm, I'm ready to, to answer questions uh, and uh, to have discussion. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ernst. That was a very informative and engaging presentation. And sorry, we had to cut you short there. Um, we see a lot of value in question and answer time. So uh, I have one to get the ball rolling here from myself. Um, one regarding the use of technology. I know you mentioned that it's going to take up to 300 years to capture that many parcels. Um, have you found that there's a, a lot of pressure to use uh, the new technologies around um, recognition of parcels from satellite imagery, et cetera. Um, and have you yeah. found that the, the response is really not to, not to go for something too technologically um, at the forefront? Yeah, if, if I, if I uh, mentioned the Benin case, uh, we, we have uh, studied uh, different ways of uh, types of collection data, uh, data collection. For example, from aerial photography uh, and also with uh, GNSS uh, equipment uh, on, uh, in the terrain. Uh, for for the Bing, in the Benin case, we have uh, uh, in the end uh, selected the GNSS uh, the use of GNSSs because in this country there is a really a strong uh, request also by the population and by the government to to mark all the parcels by cornerstones. And once you have them, that it's very difficult to recognize those cornerstones from aerial photography. 
because they're very small and 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 the stones will may not be there at the moment that the photography was uh, was taken so that made us choose in this country for uh, uh, data collection in the terrain also the geometric part but for example in in uh, nepal and uh, mozambique and, uh, and and colombia uh data collection from aerial photography is also um, widely used okay. is that a answer to your question? Yes, it is. Thank you. Um, there's actually a few other questions coming in, and I think I had one similar to uh, one from Tim Birch, Birch in the US. Um, it's around the the use of your solution for communal land rights. Um, is there a, is there a plan for the government to be um, creating a solution that recognises communal tenure? I'm yeah. There is a, yeah. Um, the, uh, there are two, several ways uh, to answer that, um, or several levels. If you look at the at the LADM profile, and, and I'm now referring to the Benin case. If you look at the LADM profile, that allows communal communal land rights and all, all types of land rights uh, that that may be possible in the country. Um, and then we come to the implementation part of the project. In this uh, project, we are just collecting presumed ownership, which may be ownership by, by individuals, but it may also be uh, ownership by uh, formal or informal groups. But um, we are not collecting land use rights. That, is, we, that was left out of the project. But the, the, all of the infrastructure, the LADM and the system, it, it, it allows to, to um, collect also those types of rights, um, but at, in, in, a, in, a, in a next phase. So the infrastructure is there, but in this, in this uh, project, we, we, we collect uh, presumed ownership data, but also may also be by informal groups. So, Okay, so it's scalable. You can you can uh, yeah sure modify it later. Okay yeah sure yeah excellent. Okay, um, just looking at the time, we have probably time for one more question. And Ernst, did you put any questions to us for Mentimeter? Uh, I didn't think for that. So if I no, if okay. something comes, comes up to me, I will I will share Next it. Yeah. Question. Okay. Yes. I'm sure. made some questions already there on Mentimeter if you can just log on and sign up polls. Thank you. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. So if you didn't catch that, we have some questions in Mentimeter relating to Ernst's presentation. And I've seen a lot of questions come in through the chat room. Um, I appreciate the time you've taken to ask those questions. And Ernst, if you don't mind, I'll send you a a document that we have with all these questions and I'll ask could you respond to them um, after the sure. workshop. Yeah sure. Thank you. Sure. Thank you very yeah. much. Okay. Merci beaucoup. Merci à votre service. <laughs> okay you've lost me. I wish I spoke more French. <laughs>